The trick to getting high? First, you need a very good body, and then you need certain technique elements that help you to get more out of that body. That's biomechanist Jesus Depena, and he's an expert in the high jump. The world record for this event is just over eight feet tall. And just to give you a sense. If you're wondering how a person could possibly propel himself over a bar the height of a UPS truck, the U.S. Olympic Committee and USA Track and Field wanted more details on this, too. And back in 1981, they hired scientists to look into it. We would go to national competitions and film or actual high jumps with two cameras shooting from two different directions. And you manually digitize the positions of body points. And then you have a computer program that puts this information together and gives you 3D information on how all of these points of the body moved. And then we would interpret what these athletes are doing, what is good, what is bad, and then give advice to the athletes. High jump technique has evolved over the years. There was the scissors, followed by the western roll, then the straddle. And then in the late 60s, this kid, Dick Fosbury, turned the high jump upside down. Actually, he sort of turned it right side up. In vogue at the time was the straddle. Uh, And the straddle, you go over the bar on your stomach. But Dick Fosbury went over the bar, belly up, and head first. At first, people dismissed this as an idiosyncrasy, DePena says. And then uh, the Olympics came in Mexico City, and Fosbury won. High jumpers everywhere watched with interest, according to Dr. DePena, who was a high jumper. Well, I was a low jumper. And when I saw this, the next day I tried it. He wanted to understand it as well. All of my jumping, I was thinking of it in in mechanical terms. And then at one point, I find out you could actually go to work in biomechanics. And that's what I've been doing all my life. Here are the basic ingredients of a high jump. The most important element, I would say, is the speed of the run-up. You come running very fast at the bar. At the end... You plant your foot on the ground clearly ahead of your body. That is critical. Planting that foot, the takeoff leg as it's called, ahead of the body, you're reducing the forward momentum of your body. As your body keeps going forward, your takeoff leg will flex, and your muscles will be resisting against that flexion, which means that the muscles are being forced to stretch, like your quadriceps muscle in front of your thigh. And as you stretch that muscle, that muscle can make really big forces. Your muscles push against the ground. And as you push downward harder on the ground, the ground pushes harder up. And up you go. The other limbs help out too. Uh, Your muscles are throwing your arms up. Your muscles are throwing your lead leg up. And by reaction, by action and reaction, the arms and the lead leg are pushing downward against your trunk, and that compresses your takeoff leg harder against the ground so you can make a bigger force. Jumpers also have to get low just at the beginning of the jump, and that gives them more time to push off into the air. At the time you leave the ground, your body's going to behave like a projectile. And the projectile in this case would be the center of mass of the athlete is what would follow this path. It's called a parabola. The center of mass is the average location of all the body mass, sort of here-ish. However, for one given parabola, that does not guarantee what height you're going to clear. Because although the center of mass is in the same place for these two jumpers, this guy's legs would hit the bar. That's why you have to get horizontal. And if you curve your body enough... Your center of mass could theoretically be passing under the bar, but your pelvis is going over the bar. Mid-jump, jackknife the legs up, and you're done. All in about... Oh, ballpark, about one second to complete the whole jump. And it turns out that that second is actually sort of the easy part, Topena says, because once you leave the ground... The whole path of the projectile is determined. There's nothing you can do to change the path of that projectile. So all the spectacular things you see in the bar clearance, those are mainly an effect of everything that happened in the run-up and in the takeoff. As usual, if you want to reach great heights... It's the groundwork that counts. For Science Friday, I'm Flora Lichtman.